Lord, we are here today to hear your word, the word of God, the creator, who solely holds the power of creation. We pray for the same Holy Spirit of wisdom and understanding that you provided Solomon. Please guide us, teach us, and help us to keep your word of truth in our hearts. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus, name we pray. Amen. Meditation of the week comes from Proverbs 8, verses 1 through 36. Does not wisdom cry, and understanding put forth her voice? She standeth in the top of high places by the way in the places of the path. She crieth at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in at the doors. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of man. O ye simple, understand wisdom, and ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. Hear, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. For my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing forward or perverse in them. They are all plain to him that understandeth, and right to them that find knowledge. Receive my instruction, and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence, and find out knowledge of witty inventions. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy, and the evil way, and the froward mouth do I hate. Counsel is mine, and sound wisdom, I am understanding, I have strength. By me kings reign, and princes decree justice. By me princes rule, and nobles, and even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Riches and honor are with me, yea, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yea, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness, in the midst of the paths of judgment, that I may cause those that love me to, in to inherit substance, and I will fill their treasures. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way, before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning or ever the earth was. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the depth. When he established the clouds above. When he strengthened the fountains of the deep. When he gave to the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the fountains of the earth. Then I was by him, as one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in the habitable part of his earth, and my delights were with the sons of men. Now therefore hearken unto me, O ye children, for blessed 
are they that keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. For whoso findeth me findeth life, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. Amen. Message comes from Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, and it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the day, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Amen. Today's title for the message is The Word of God with the Power of Creation. Let's look at the word uh, Genesis, the first book of the Bible. The word generation also came from it, and also the word gene. The chromosome that contains all human habits and various good and bad things. Therefore, the word Genesis is thus referring to the origin of mankind. In verse 1, it says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. It consists of ten words in English. In Hebrew, it is seven. The numerical system of the Gentile world is decimal, system based on ten. But God's perfect number is seven. We also see this in musical notes, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. After seven, it starts again, another octave. Hence, the mystery of God hidden in the seven system is that after 6,000 years of history of mankind, God's millennial kingdom begins, marking the end of world kingdom and beginning of the seventh millennium. After that, with the new heaven and new earth, we start the eighth millennium the eternity. Therefore, even in the words of the first verse of Genesis, there are mysterious things that are written in detail about the heavens and the earth, about man, sin, redemption, and races. It is also written in detail about the origin of the various covenants between God and man. Also in Genesis are those who are typified by the coming Antichrist, such as Cain, Ham, Nimrod, Laban, Ishmael, and Pharaoh. It also contains model words related to the end times. Genesis is the first book, but it is the beginning and the end. According to the attributes of God, Alpha and Omega. The first book, Genesis, also records what will happen at the end. Indeed, God's word is a word that cycles from beginning to end. Let's meditate on the words of verse 1. In the beginning, God created 
the heavens and the earth. Here it says that God created. It is not saying that they are gods. It says that only God created them. The thoughts of all atheists in this passage are all in vain. Apostle Paul testified that all who say there is no God are liars and that only God is true. The word that God created is overshadowing the words of all evolutionists in the world. The word that God created the heavens first clearly states that the religious people who call and worship heaven as God are wrong. It also says that God created heaven and earth in the beginning. This beginning speaks of the beginning of God, which we cannot imagine or know. The Bible says that man began about 6,000 years ago, but no one knows how long has passed since the beginning of God. To this beginning, Apostle John testifies in John chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. He also testified that God, who was in the Word, created the heavens and the earth, and that the very Creator, God, is Jesus Christ, manifested as a man. In John chapter 1, verse 14, he said, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. King Solomon also testified of the presence of Jesus Christ in the Holy Spirit with Heavenly Father. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way, before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, wherever the earth was. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set up a compass upon the face of the depth. When he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep. When he gave the sea his decree that the water should not pass his commandment when he appointed the foundations of the earth. Then I was by him, as one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in the habitable part of his earth, and my delights were with the sons of men. Proverbs 8 verses 22 to 31. Long ago, through the prophet Jeremiah, God proclaimed his word about other false gods in the world. He spoke of this in Jeremiah chapter 10, verses 11 through 13. Thus shall ye say unto them, the gods that have not made heavens and the earth, even they shall perish from the earth and from under these heavens. He hath made the earth by his power, 
he hath established the world by his wisdom, and hath stretched out the heavens by his discretion. When he uttereth his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens, and he caused the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He maketh lightnings with rain, and bringeth forth the wind out of his treasures. The Bible says that there are many gods beside, besides God. Gods with small g. But they are just things without the ability to create heaven and earth. We must not forget that Satan, who sinned and was cast out to the earth, deceived people by making fallen angels like gods in the world. The Bible speaks of such gods. In Psalms 82 verses 1, 6, and 7, God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth among the gods. I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. But ye shall die like men, and fall like one of the princes. Apostle Paul testified that the gods who do not believe in the Creator God are the gods that will be destroyed in the future. He mentioned this in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Modern scientists not only deny in God's creation of the heavens and the earth, but they also teach others not to believe. In the science they claim, first there is time, there is space, there is some movement, then there is a substance that is the material of movement and there is energy for movement. This is their ground for denying God's creation. But God's word speaks more accurately than science and it teaches us exactly what is missing out of the five things they claim. In Genesis there is a time called the beginning. There is a space called heaven. There is a movement that created. There is material, earth, and the energy that scientists claim is God. But scientists do not believe in God and falsely claim that energy came from self-evolution. Those who do not believe in God do not believe in Satan. Not only are they ignorant, but also foolish because they don't know that the Bible states that even Satan believes in God and trembles in fear. Though the words given today, we must clearly understand why we should believe and accept Jesus Christ. Believing in and accepting Jesus Christ is because he is the only life-giving creator, God. And when we believe and accept him, we can overcome all the deceitful gods of the world. And all those who claim vain science. We are able to withdraw from all the darkness when we can constantly believe in the Word of God, proclaim the power of creation verbally, and we can do the great work of saving the sinners in the darkness by shining the light of life. Because the Holy Spirit operates in those who believe in Jesus Christ, Heavenly Father creates the light of life by simply proclaiming the word of God 
whenever necessary. Blessings to all of you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. This week's message and previous recordings can be found on our website at wgmi.org. That's wgmi.org. You can also find us on podcasts by searching WGM Church in the search field. For Android users, you can find us on TuneIn app, that's T-U-N-E-I-N app, by also typing WGM Church in the search field.